Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Thursday. It is Friday, Junior, September 16th. Yeah, Thursday, uh, Friday Eve. Yeah, Friday, Friday Eve, Eve, officially. All right, so the workforce winds up at home due to the pandemic, and then the vaccine comes out, we start to kind of trickle back, and companies start making plans for a return to in-person work, and then they put the brakes on with Delta variant. It's been a back and forth. Right. And uh, is working from home now a deal breaker for you and where you work? If so, you're not alone. Yeah, apparently a lot of people are okay working from home. So this is a new survey that finds the pandemic lockdowns, which pushed many companies to switch to remote work, like Mark was saying, are changing when employees are putting on their must-have lists when it comes to their careers. Now, nearly six in 10 people, that's 58% of those surveyed, say they want a fully remote job pretty much forever. <laughs> The Flex job survey of more than 4,600 people also finds 39% prefer a hybrid job that allows them to work at home and at the office. Meanwhile, just 3% of respondents want to return to an office full time after the pandemic. That's a huge takeaway right there. That stuff. Uh, 3%, only 3% want to go back to the office mm -hmm. full time. Very telling. Now, researchers find that one in five people would actually give up some of their vacation time if it meant they get to work from home. Oh. Yeah, that's big too. And also one in four claim they're willing to take a pay cut of up to 20% to work from home whenever they want. And it sounds like more and more people are actually willing to walk away from their full time job if they are forced to return to the office. Yeah, I know a lot of people um, have been saving on gas. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just yeah. works out better. Child care, meals, uh, gasoline, everything. We've heard, you know, we've been talking about that for a year and a half now. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how things turn out. Let's take a look at today's Nine at Nine. Some of America's top gymnasts are demanding charges be filed against the FBI agents. They say mishandled the Larry Nassar investigation. Simone Biles and others say their claims were ignored, allowing more girls to be victimized. One FBI agent on the case has since retired. The other was fired just two weeks ago. Thousands crossing the border in Del Rio are ending up under a bridge. Del Rio's mayor says 2,200 people showed up on Monday, and that number continues to grow. U.S. Customs and Border Protection confirmed the bridge is serving as a temporary staging site. Water, towels, and portable toilets have been delivered. Moderna says it's working on a vaccine booster aimed at specifically protecting people against the COVID-19 variants. Meanwhile, it's waiting on emergency approval from the Food and Drug Administration for a third booster dose of its original COVID-19 vaccine. The Transportation Security Administration says they are boosting security at some airports in advance of Saturday's Justice for J6 rally in Washington. The protesters are rallying in support of those involved with the January 6th insurrection. Millions of families will be receiving more money in their bank accounts courtesy of the IRS. The third child tax credit payment will go out today. Most parents will receive up to $300 for each child six years old or younger and $250 for each child between six and 17 years old. CDC says the number of states reporting at least 35% of their residents are obese has nearly doubled in the last three years. Delaware, Iowa, Ohio, and Texas are new additions to the list this year. SpaceX successfully made history Wednesday by launching the first all-civilian crew into space. Inspiration 4 will spend three days orbiting Earth. SpaceX says this is just the beginning of space tourism. Walmart and Ford are getting ready to start testing self-driving delivery vehicles. The first runs will be made in parts of Austin, Miami, and Washington, D.C. later this year. Ho, ho, no. Decking the halls could be more expensive this year. Supply chain disruptions are forcing some retailers to hike prices on artificial trees. One tree company says its shipping prices to get trees to the U.S. will likely quadruple this year. And that's today's 9 at 9. 902, 74 degrees. It wasn't bad out there this morning. Again, fairly low humidity, emphasis on fairly. Fairly, fairly. yeah, not too bad. We like it. It was dry enough to where we got down into the 60s a little bit earlier, so it did feel really good. But we're already turning the corner now. Temperatures are starting to warm up. We're in the upper 70s at this hour, 77 now, 68 Kerrville, 79 in Del Rio, 77 Carrizo Springs. It's going to be a hot day. We know that the, the sun is already out. Unlike yesterday, 
we don't have those clouds to keep us cool, at least through the first half of the day. So we're going to be up around 94 today, 96 tomorrow. There's an outside chance of a storm tomorrow, 95 Saturday. The record height tomorrow is 97. So we're going to be right there in record territory. This heat uh, is going to stay with us into the weekend, too. Let's look at the pollen count. Ragweed, fall elm, they're back up there again today in the moderate category. Molds and pigweed are low. And uh, if you're uh, outside right now, you got clear skies. It's, uh, it really is a beautiful morning. Dew point is at 66. North Northeast Julie winds at about three miles per hour. We do have some football games tonight. Should be great weather for that, albeit a little bit warm. Uh, kickoff about 90 degrees. Clear skies at sunset is at 737 by halftime. We'll be in the 80s. This year will be somewhat dry, won't be overly humid. We do have some rain chances this weekend to talk about, and maybe, just maybe, a cold front next week. The latest on that here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out there with Transguide, there's another look there at I-35 at Ben's Engelman. Uh, this is what we've been talking about all morning. There was an overturned 18-wheeler, and you can see that area is still blocked off. Now they're working on it. Uh, we heard earlier they did finally get it upright, but it looks like nothing else has happened. If this clears in the next hour, of course, we will let you know. Today is September 16th, as we mentioned, a day that signifies one of the most important moments in Mexico's history. It is the anniversary of Mexico's Declaration of Independence from Spain, and it coincides with Hispanic Heritage Month. RJ Marcus joins us live in the studio with more. Good morning, RJ. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Big day across the country of Mexico. The celebrations for their Independence Day started overnight and have been going on throughout the entire morning. So the day commemorates when Catholic priest Miguel Hidalgo in 1810 made the cry for independence hours after midnight by giving a riveting speech in the town of Dolores and ringing the town's church bells. So as we see celebrations here throughout the night. So the moment which became known as the Grito de Dolores was the start of a 11 year Mexican War of Independence that resulted in Mexico gaining freedom from Spain after being under colonial rule for over 300 years. So every year during the late night of September 15th, as we mentioned, these celebrations have been going on throughout the morning. The president of Mexico stands on the balcony of the National Palace in Mexico City and delivers a similar speech to Hidalgo's and honors those who fought for the country's independence. The president also also waves a Mexican flag and rings the same bell Hidalgo did over 300 years ago. So just keep this in mind, Mexico's independence was much different from the U.S. breaking away from European rule. The Spaniards had greater power over the indigenous people of Mexico who were often seen as second-class citizens. That's what made the Grito de Dolores such an, such an iconic moment in the new country. It gave people hope that they would be free. But it was also harder for Mexico to rebuild the country. And of course, we know that wasn't the end of the country's battles. The Mexican-American War followed that and resulted in the U.S. obtaining much of the present-day Southwest. So regardless of the toll the wars took on Mexico and its people, it's still a major victory in becoming its own nation, one that is greatly celebrated today. A common misconception is that Cinco de Mayo is Mexico's independence day. That is not the case. That is actually a celebration of Mexico defeating France in the Battle of Puebla in 1862. So September 16th, or Desi Seis de Septiembre, is the day that they're, and there are many ways to celebrate here. People can celebrate the holiday outside of Mexico if they want. Families and friends will often throw parties together. Since the holiday is about coming together as one, the day represents solidarity, perseverance, liberation, freedom, and joy. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, guys. And San Antonio's West Side is celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month in a major way. 2021 marks 30 years since the Guadalupe Dance Company first graced the stage. It's through the history lessons embedded in music, choreography, and traditional attire that Mexican folklorico dancers hope to preserve and promote their culture. Alicia Berrera sat down with some of the dedicated dancers and leaders of the Guadalupe Dance Company to learn more about their history and legacy. It's also really cool. And I can't say that when I was 15 that I knew that I would still be here, but we are. Jeanette Chavez is an original member of the Guadalupe Dance Company. I just happened upon and then fell in love and everything that the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center stood for, for our community and for our culture, I just wanted to be part of it. I mean, everybody loves Jalisco, right? You hear El Son de la Negra and, you know, everybody's heart just kind of skips a beat, right? You love that. Belinda Menchaca, now the education director for the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center, vividly recalls the dance company's first Florcorico performance back in 1991. We were part of the citywide, you know, Grito ceremony, September 15th of 1991, on the stage of the Lila Caco Theater, 
the, the celebrity from Mexico was Gon Gonzalo Vega. He was the special guest that evening, and it was, it was a grand event. El baile folclórico or folkloric dance references to the beliefs, practices, and customs of the Mexican culture in its various regions. 30 years later, their presence on stages all across San Antonio and the applause from the crowds prove that their mission and culture lives on. This is who we are, this, that's, our, that's our history, and we owe it to our ancestors, we owe it to our community. I think that's why the Guadalupe Dance Company has survived the 30 years, because we're based in tradition, we're informed by our history, but we are able to tell our stories of our communities. Jeanette now serves as the Guadalupe Dance Company's dance director, hoping to lead the next generation of folkloric dancers. <laughs> years a lot of work has really been done uh, behind the scenes and of course on stage to make this happen and it's not just all about the dance now the Guadalupe Dance Company actually has an academy for these young dancers and that way when they enter later on they could become an apprentice and that way they learn everything about the behind the scenes so even the production aspect of things that way one day they could lead a performance for a big crowd and really this is just another another way to help preserve and promote the Mexican culture. Mark and Stephanie. Alicia, uh, good morning, by the way. When is their next performance? Yes, so write it down. October 1st is going to be the big 30-year celebration, so you still have a few weeks to buy your tickets. It's going to be happening Friday, October 1st, at Plaza Avenida Guadalupe, so just behind of where we're standing here on the city's west side. They're going to be accompanied by Mariachi Azteca, and this is happening at 8 p.m. There is also a virtual option, as we know many people are still preferring to stay indoors and stay safe with their families, so that's another option for them. So again, Friday, October 1st is the big 30-year celebration. Reporting live from the city's west side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Very cool. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. 910 right now, about 76 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A big celebration of the arts happening this weekend. Details on what that celebration is about and how you can get involved later in the show. But first, your morning headlines with David Sears. Why a group of school kids of Pennsylvania rode around with the back door of a school bus wide open. And welcome back. It's about 913 in your morning headlines. Pretty upsetting child abuse video. The mom has been arrested and more disturbing video from behind a school bus. A country superstar has to be rescued and I'm having deja vu all over again. <laughs> more zebras on the loose. David Sears is here. Good We've morning. We've seen this story before. Just like the last week or it's so. It's a different yeah. verse. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, on the country music star, think I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. See if you can figure this one out. We'll get oh, to that in okay. a second. But first, this is this is really serious. This is uh, this is definitely going to get some reaction from you. It's a mom at a convenience store throwing her screaming child down to the floor. That uh, child hits face first. It's happening in Des Moines, Iowa. The boy has autism. He's nine. In a matter of seconds, Michael Lomax and his fiance, Arkea Quinn, were at the store at the time. They stepped in to help the child when they heard those screams. She had like threw him down and he like smacked his face and then that's when I like pretty much came in and I pushed her like get off of him you don't you don't do that to a child the child is screaming for his life I'm like unhand him like let him go like and I, I think I, I might have grabbed her or something and to get get her off of him yeah in another video you can see the woman start to leave the store then just reach up and smack Quinn in the back of the head then it's really on Quinn goes after her and so does her fiance when it's all said and done the woman Regini Morris was arrested and charged with child endangerment and two counts of assault. The child is now in the care of DHS and according to the police is doing pretty good. All right, here's another bizarre story. We are near Philadelphia. A student who just happens to be the child of a person who works at a TV station was taking cell phone video of smoke in the air and then what looks like antifreeze all over the floor of the bus near the kids' backpacks. Now another video of the same bus. The emergency door is open. You can see one of the kids just standing right there by the door. The middle schoolers on the bus. One of them belongs to Renee Vescuzzi. Her other two kids are in high school. They happen to be driving behind the bus when they started shooting the video and tried to keep other vehicles from getting behind the bus. And all of a sudden, the bus stops. Kids start jumping off. Driver apparently still unaware of what's going on and pulls away again. 
The kids got to school. Everybody's safe. The superintendent wouldn't talk on camera, released a statement in part saying, fortunately, all safety safely exited the bus once it stopped, but not according to Renee. That's not what I saw. The bus had stopped um, and, and kids started jumping out, but then the bus started moving again while kids were still trying to jump out. The Scoozy also says she hopes they use this as a learning experience. All right, recognize this woman right there? See who that is? Yeah. You are looking at country superstar Reba McIntyre. She's climbing out of a second story window and being helped down that ladder to safety. Reba was touring in a historic building in the small town of Atoka, Oklahoma. She was checking out the 100 year old building for a future project when the stairwell from the second floor to the third floor collapsed and that fell on the stairs to the first floor. So everybody had to be rescued from whatever floor they were on. <laughs> Reba happened to be on the second floor. The manager of the diner across the street heard about the commotion and got worried. I thought when she said Reba, I was like, oh Lord, Reba done got hurt. Reba's done hurt. And she's like, no, you must her to check on her. So she's fine. She's fine. We were just touring the building and the stairwell was weak. It seemed weak, but uh, we did not realize how, how weak it was until several people had gone down it. And then we heard the crash and saw the, the, the stairs fall. I love the graphic says trapped in building with Reba. Yeah. <laughs> she can start singing or something, get a right. free concert out of the deal. Hey, Reba was okay. Yeah, we're was glad she's hurt. okay. Yeah. One person was taken to a nearby hospital with some minor injuries, but everybody else is, uh, is surviving. So there you go. I'd be, like to be that guy helping Reba down the, the ladder. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, it's cool. Hey, that's remember a that's week a brush ago. with fame right there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And look at this. Talk about a brush with fame. Remember a week ago, we showed you zebras that got off the farm and uh -huh. were roaming around in a guy's backyards back in the woods. That was in Washington, D.C. You're looking at two zebras headed down a rural road in Wisconsin. They got away from their owners, go on a little morning stroll, and you're on board with David Haupt, who spotted the zebras. He started to follow them while he was driving his garbage truck on his route. He called 911, kept following him, eventually chased him off into a field to get him off the road. I'm on an African safari in a garbage truck. Good Lord. They were off in the distance. As I got closer, they looked like horses. And I got closer, and I happened to be talking to somebody on my headset. And I'm like, I think I see a zebra. They're like, no way. I'm like, Nope, those are zebras. <laughs> well, it, it's not the first exa exotic animal call we've ever gotten. Uh, every once in a while, you get something different. Uh, but yeah, having a garbage truck driver call you and say, well, there's two zebras in the road is a bit unusual. The owners live nearby. We're able to round up the zebras and get them home. The video from David, of course, it's gone viral. I love that. I thought badgers were the thing for Wisconsin. Well. Apparently, uh, okay, go with my theory here. Like okay. These are the original zebras you reported on. It took them this long to, to, to trot to, to Wisconsin. <laughs> to, get to, to trot, Wisconsin. yeah. Maybe, Maybe a little longer. Who knows? But I love the fact that guy's in his garbage truck on an African safari. Safari, right yeah, yep. that was cute. <laughs> it's free admission. David, thank you <laughs> yes, very thank much. You. See you in a bit. All right, fall is on the calendar. Maybe yes. a frame of mind, but it's definitely on the calendar. Yeah, I cheated. Six and a half days, right? Yeah, we have it on the seven-day forecast now, which is very <laughs> exciting, guys. Uh, let's think cooler thoughts, okay, because uh, we're in for some heat next couple days. Fall, yes, we're within a week of fall. Halloween, 44 days away. Thanksgiving is 69 days away. Christmas, 99. So we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We'll get some cooler weather at some point. Uh, over the next two days, though, it will not be in the forecast. 94 degrees today is what we're thinking here in San Antonio. Some places like Del Rio up near 100 yet again. We'll fast forward to tomorrow. 96 the forecast high, Del Rio 101. Our record tomorrow is 97. So we're going to be in record territory. Uh, be prepared for some heat. Thankfully, the humidity won't be too bad. But uh, outside right now, we're starting to see temperatures warm up. 77 at the airport, 79 Stinson, 77 Kelly, 74 Randolph. Any sort of wind we have today is, is going to be light, probably out of the north and east. 70 Bernie State, 73 Canyon Lake, 66 still in Las Maples, one of the cool spots for now. 78 Pleasanton and uh, 79 in Del Rio, 77 in Carrizo Springs. So dew point forecast for today. Basically holding in the mid 60s this morning and then probably falling off into the low 60s, almost, almost into the pleasant category. I don't think you'll notice the humidity all that much today. And that's what allowed us that lower humidity 
allowed us to get into the 60s this morning. Briefly, looking at the uh, radar and satellite here, we still have the leftovers from Nicholas producing some pretty good rainfall, not as much as yesterday, but rainfall nonetheless, Alabama over towards uh, Georgia and South Carolina this morning. That'll continue for another day or so. We're in the clear now. Nicholas has moved far enough away where we're not even getting clouds. But on water vapor, which water vapor it gives us a good idea of any sort of circulation or spin in the atmosphere, we can see it right there, a little spin over the Red River, Panhandle of Texas. That's a little area of low pressure that will work its way south. And as it does, it's just enough energy there maybe to get some showers going. Not today. I think today's quiet. But as you get into Friday, uh, I, I think we could see a stray shower or two. It's, it's really not going to be much, I don't think. And that'll be the case over the weekend as the slow sort of moves to our east. Saturday, maybe a shower or two. Uh, this is Saturday, 5 o'clock. It does show a little bit of activity a little bit closer to the coast. So we'll put in some 20% chances of rain over the weekend. If you're planning out your weekend, don't cancel your plans because of these rain chances. Most of us are going to stay dry. 96 uh, Saturday, should say Saturday, 95 Sunday with that 20% chance of rain. Extended forecast. We'll go 10% tomorrow, 20% chance Saturday, Sunday, as we just showed you, 95 Monday. And then next week is when it tries to get a little bit interesting. There's a front that comes to our doorstep. It looks like late Tuesday into Wednesday. This will kick up some showers and storms. Not so convinced that it will move through and cool us down, but at least it will give us some rain chances and maybe bring temperatures down a hair by Wednesday when fall officially begins, guys. Well, it, it's cool that that one front does kind of coincide with with the timing falls arrival. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 trying. It's trying. We'll get there eventually. Beggars can't be choosers. Right. That's at this right. at this point, I'll just take some cloud cover. Something. That's right? good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. You we, got it. we appreciate you. <laughs> right now, it's 9:22, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at nine, a new episode of Case It Explains is out now. Details on what you might want to bring an appetite for before watching it. 926, the newest episode of Case Out Explains debuted this week. The streaming show is now out for you to watch on demand. Here's RJ Marquez and Myra Arthur to explain how this week's show is deliciously different. You know, on Case Out Explains, a lot of times we talk about big issues facing our community, mm -hmm. things that are making news, making headlines that need a little bit more context. That's not at all what we're doing this week. <laughs> we are talking about tacos. That is something that brings all of us together. We're exploring the different styles, the different flavors, and the history of tacos in this episode. Yeah, Myra, you, so obviously love put, love being a part of this episode. <laughs> We're able to taste all sorts of different tacos from different places and locations. But as you mentioned, really kind of the history and kind of how that has been such a big part of our culture and identity. I love that part of this episode as well. So not only will you get your fill of tacos, but you'll also <laughs> get some information. Yes, we went to several different spots around town that you can go visit to try these different styles. You tried out the Bidia mm -hmm. tacos. Yeah, yeah. Bidia pizza, even yes. I believe. Uh, the, the Bidia boom, it's gotten so popular <laughs> that we're getting a lot of Bidia restaurants and I found out that that is a traditional taco in Mexico and on the West Coast, but now it's really kind of made its mark here in San Antonio. A really neat part of this episode too is other cuisines of other cultures, the way that they are using the taco in San Antonio to introduce people here in the Alamo City to their cuisines. I got to try mm -hmm. Korean street tacos for awesome. the very first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had never heard of that prior yeah. to this episode. So point is, this was a really tough one to put together, <laughs> but we made it. Someone has we, to do I it. I mean, right? we yeah. did it. Someone yes, this episode debuted last night. Mm -hmm. I had to have tacos today for lunch. <laughs> so yeah. go check it out. We promise it's delicious. KSAT.com slash explains or the KSAT TV app. You can watch this episode. KSAT explains San Antonio taco culture right now on demand. You can also find any other episode that we have featured so far in those two locations. Right now it's 928, about 77 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. After a years long battle with Selena's family, her widower, Chris Betta, says he has finally made amends with the family. Details on how it all worked out and what's next. And Katie Blake, David Sears are looking for labs now that school is back in session. Katie and David are searching for some new ideas for Katie's science lab. Details on how you might be able to help. 
Welcome back. Just about 932, as we've talked about a lot here on GMS 8 Idle, many organizations around the Alamo City area were hit very hard by the pandemic, include the, including those, rather, supporting the arts. That's why this weekend, five local arts organizations are coming together for a celebration. KSET producer Priscilla Karaman has been highlighting some of them and all week on GMSA. She joins us now to tell us more. Good morning, Priscilla. Good morning. So first of all, these are all different arts organizations. What's one thing that stood out when talking to some of the members? Yeah, so we talked to the ballet, the choir, uh, the Museum of Art, and uh, all of them kind of just said that they all come from di different backgrounds in San Antonio. Uh, they said that once they've, you know, got involved with the organization, it's kind of like they formed a family. They've been able to learn about so many different people um, who have either grown up here or moved here. So I think it's like a, it's an important sense of community for them. And I think that was probably one of the most interesting things that I uh, learned about some of the members in each of those organizations. Priscilla, after doing these stories, let's talk about uh, the importance of supporting the arts in our, our home city. Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, when I was hearing from all of the different members, one of the things that they they all seem to say was that they're hoping to inspire people. And I think that all of us probably know at least one person who's involved in some type of arts organization, especially when they're younger. And so being able to see people who have turned, you know, their creative passions into professional careers and they've been able to kind of study long term and then you know, pursue it after school or once they're graduated, once they're, you know, becoming adults. I think that that's probably one of the most important things that we can support the arts about is to help support the people in our lives and that we know who are younger, who are wanting to maybe become singers, musicians, uh, actors professionally, and they can do it right here in San Antonio. So. Oh, very go good. I mean, I know last year has been pretty hard for a lot of people with the pandemic and everything, and some of them couldn't perform, and, you know, now they can. Um, you have another story coming up tomorrow. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so tomorrow's story, we're actually going to be talking with Ballet San Antonio, and we talked to one dancer who grew up here, and she said that she's been watching the ballet. She knew a lot about it. She's been studying ballet since she was a little girl, and she spent, I believe it was five years, you know, working with them, but this year she's actually joining the company, so she's working professionally with them instead of just practicing or um studying it. And so I think that that's going to be really, um, that's going to really speak to our viewers who are looking to kind of turn their passions into more. Um, and then we're also going to hear from a male dancer who says that whenever you're thinking of ballet, you really don't know how much goes into it. It's very athletic. There's a lot of, uh, how did he put it? He says that there's a lot of determination involved and it really tests your body as a whole so i think that he might inspire some people who are watching to kind of try it out themselves priscilla we told people that you're a producer here at ksat what's it like to be on on this side of a story yeah so i normally produce the news at five and uh we don't get out very much whenever we're producing a show it's very uh it's it's the same thing daily different stories but we kind of do it's a pattern. And so being able to get out in the community and kind of share stories with people who live here and people who have things to say, it's really different. And I really enjoy being able to, to just talk to people and tell stories more longer form. So it's something that I enjoy doing um, and I hope to do more of it. And then a reminder, your story's coming up tomorrow morning, correct? Tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And then you guys, if you're wanting to find more about the event that's going on, you can go to ksat.com. We have links there and you can find out more information, not only on the event, but also how to support uh, each of these organizations. Fantastic. All right, thank you, Priscilla. Good to see you through Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. KSAT producer Priscilla Karaman. Thank you very much, Priscilla. All right, let's go outside with live cam, folks. Warming up pretty quick out there. Uh, we knew this scenario might play out this week with a lack of cloud cover compared to yesterday. Yeah, it's heating up fast. This morning, though, it was one of those mornings where Steph was had the big fur coat on and had the heater on in the car. <laughs> might as well. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the numbers don't, dipped into the 60s a little bit earlier, 67 to be exact here in San Antonio. So it was a great start. We had the clear skies. The air was a little dry this morning. That helped things out. 61 Kerrville, 64 Rock Springs, 68 in Creosote Springs got down to 71 at Beeville. 
Uh, there's a look outside. Just a few high clouds in the sky. That is it. So temperatures have rebounded very quickly. 77 degrees. Dew point is at 66. We've got a light north northeasterly breeze at about three miles per hour. Looking at temperatures now, most places in the 70s on the verge of moving into the 80s here uh, with uh, some lower 70s in the hill country. Uh, 69 comfort. That's a cool spot, but everybody else in the 70s. 76 Gonzalez, 76 right now in Seguin. Let's talk rain chances now. If you're hoping for some rain, and I know it's been a little bit since we've gotten a good rainfall, small chances over the weekend, and I really don't think we see much. If, we, if we're going to see anything, it's going to be a light shower. Tuesday into Wednesday of next week, we have a better opportunity for some showers and storms. As the frontal battery gets a little closer to the area, may not move through, but at least gives us some lift and some chances for rain there. In the meantime, we're back in the 90s today. 93 by 3 o'clock, 94, 5 o'clock, mostly sunny skies. Friday night football will be toasty tonight. Northeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with Transguide. Uh, there's that picture we've been looking at all morning at I-35 and Ben's Engelman. Again, we had an overturned 18-wheeler earlier this morning, and as you can see, that is still blocked off. Still in the clearing stages. Those usually take many, many hours, and it's proving true yet again today. After spending years entangled in lots of legal disputes, Selena's widower, Chris Perez, and her family have reconciled. Fed has made the announcement via Twitter yesterday, and this is a brand new story on KSET.com right now. So KSET digital journalist Ferris Avali joins us now to break it down. And good morning, Ferris. Hi, Ferris. Hey, good morning. How are y'all? We're good. We're good. Hey, first of all, when did Chris's legal battle with Selena's family begin? Yes, yeah, Stephanie, this actually started back in 2016 when Chris Pettis had announced that he secured rights to a TV deal um, based on his memoir called To Selena With Love. Now, that TV deal would have violated an agreement that he had signed with the Quintanilla family uh, right after Selena's death that gave, the, uh, that gave Abraham Quintanilla, Selena's father, the rights to her likeness and her image. And so uh, Abraham Quintanilla sued him in 2016, and what followed from that was a counterclaim from Chris Pettis that uh, where he alleged he was taken advantage of and exploited during a time of grief when he signed that agreement with the Quintanilla family. Um, so that all played out in Nueces County courtrooms and Corpus Christi uh, through the past several years. Yeah, so it got legal pretty quick over time. Ferris, how did all this wind up affecting their, their personal relationships? Yeah, you know, it really uh, appeared strained, uh, definitely. You know, um, I had uh, grown up in Corpus Christi and in 2016 there was a big Fiesta de la Flor uh, festival um, done in Selena's honor in which Chris Pettis had headlined and then once the legal battles happened the next year that festival happened Chris Pettis was completely left off of that lineup mm -hmm. um, we also saw him uh, you know take a few shots of the Quintanilla family right before that Netflix series had premiered uh, he had apologized since then said he was speaking out of turn um, and since then, as we can see and as, uh, you know, we found in court documents, both sides have appeared to reconcile and the judge has already dismissed the case uh, earlier this month. And Ferris, now that they have made up, what is next for Pettis and the family? Yeah, so that remains to be seen, but I know a lot of Selena fans are really excited about that. As I mentioned, they just wrapped up that Netflix series uh, about Selena's life. Uh, Selena's family is always looking to get her story out there, and uh, so we're all interested in seeing what that next step will be. Maybe it'll be a collaboration or a, another documentary type thing or, or uh, you know, another series. We'll have to see what happens next, but uh, as a Selena fan, a lot of fans are excited to see these two uh, come together again and, and uh, put, put the past behind them. All right, KSAT digital journalist Ferris Sababi joining us live from home, part of our awesome web team. Thank you, Ferris. Thank you all. Right now it's 941, about 78 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And for a while now, we have done Katie's Science Labs here in the KSET studio, but now we want to try something different by joining classrooms all around San Antonio. Details on how you could be featured on Katie's Science Labs after the break. I'm KSAT meteorologist Katie Blake. I not only forecast the weather here at KSAT 12, but I'm also the host of Katie's Science Lab, and this is my assistant. 
Katie's assistant. You may also know him as David Sears. <laughs> for a little over a year now, we have been conducting some simple yet educational and fun experiments for elementary to middle school age children, live Wednesdays on KSAT's GMSA at nine. Now, we want to bring those experiments to you. So if you're a teacher or a parent who would like us to come visit your school, your class, or your child's class, and have them participate in one of our experiments live on TV at nine o'clock, let us know. Maybe you are working on your own experiments and you want us to join you. All you have to do is let us know. Just contact Katie. <laughs> and we'll make the necessary arrangements and then let the science take over with Katie's Science Lab. Yay! We are so excited. It's all Exciting. about the science. Yeah, so we have a lot of fun in here, mm -hmm. but we need some more space. So that's why we want to come to some of our local classrooms and hang out with our, our local area kiddos um, and, and do some science experiments. So you're taking this on the road, technically. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. the idea. Theoretically. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. On the we know there's, you know, there's a lot. Of, I mean, how many schools are in San Antonio and South Texas? A and ton. Many. You know, how many science <laughs> classes? So they're, all, they're, all doing, they're all doing fun stuff like this, mm -hmm. you know, blowing up things and making sure things will, will, you know, fuzz and fizz and, you know, make some ice cream or whatever. So we want to take it on the road. We want to be a part. You know, there's, there's nothing better than hanging out with like fifth and sixth graders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really? true. Can you think of anything better? True. All great. Although it doesn't have to be just fifth, fifth no, and sixth graders. But, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so if you are a teacher, I know well, school's in right now, so right. we may Maybe, teaching, maybe right? we don't have a lot of teachers watching, but if you're a parent watching at home and you think this would be a fun thing for your child's class to do, or um, if you're watching at home and your child is a teacher and you think this would be something fun for their class to do, we would love to hear from you. You can email me. That's my email address right there on the screen, kblake at ksat.com. And uh, if you reach out, we'll try to start making the necessary arrangements. We are well aware that our school districts have different COVID protocols in place. So mm -hmm. we'll have to take the right and proper precautions, but we would love to try to uh, come out to some of our local area classrooms and have a little bit of fun. I, we're not opposed to doing some things uh, via Skype and Zoom as nope. well, but it would be really fun to be able to bring our, our lab coats and our supplies mm -hmm. to your classroom and make the learning even more fun. So what you're saying as a meteorologist, Katie, is the sky's the limit here? Oh, I like nice that. Mark. I like it. Good. That was good. I like it. And, and the fact that it's live, it doesn't necessarily have to be live. If you can't do it at nine o'clock, we can we can make arrangements. Right. We can do it at other oh, times during the day. But I think that the live part was what really makes it fun. <laughs> Because you never really know what's going to happen with uh, with Katie's. Uh, there's the bottle rocket. Do you yeah, remember that, that one? That's a good <laughs> one. Now, I'm anxious to see one. How many responses you get? Because yes. we live in a an area of over a million folks. Yes. Two. I'm anxious to see the <laughs> ideas or experiments they come up with <laughs> because they've got to top these. That's going to be well really hard. And I'm excited about this as well because we've been coming up with these on our own mm -hmm. for the past year and a few months. And I'm, <laughs> I, I need some new ideas, some fresh ideas from folks. And I would love to line up with lesson plans of, with our local teachers and things like that. I think that'd be really beneficial. So we're excited. Email okay. me. We'll get the ball rolling. You and if you're just kind of catching this and you're not real sure, we're going to run this promo all through uh, Katie's social media because, you know, she's got millions of people out there that love Katie Blake. Mm -hmm. So, For so sure. she's going to put it on all her social media so you right. get all that my information. Mom, in, so you can email. Cats. Email. Huh? My mom and my cat, my dad. Us? My Us. little girl? So, you guys. So, so there's a good, <laughs> solid 12 friends and family. Right there. <laughs> anyway, we're excited. We'd love to come visit your class. Email me, we'll get the ball rolling. Cool. K Blake at ksat.com. Yes. Or D Sears at ksat.com. Kaboom. There you go. Thank That's you guys. Good luck. Yes, ah. thank you. Doctor, doctor. Uh, let's <laughs> check in with Justin Horn now, and he's got an update on our drought monitor. Yeah, it's not looking as uh, good as it once was, guys. You look across the West, drought is really a problem. That's been the case, though, for the better part of a year. That's not much of a surprise. But I want to take you down to Texas because, okay, we're still doing okay, but this week we're at 3%. And we're starting to head in the wrong direction now. Last week we had less than 1% of the state in drought. Now we're at 3%. We're starting to see some areas pop up even here locally where moderate drought is starting to show up. So we need to get some rain in here. And uh, Medina Lake's not doing well either. It's 30% full. It continues a steady drop here. It's down 3.3 feet over the last month. So some rain would be a, a great thing. 
and we're 23.57 for the year. Notice that we are just barely now above average. So if we go another week or so without rain, we may see this number drop below average. Austin's still doing really well. They're about five inches above the average. And keep in mind, this is just the airport. There are a lot of places around South Texas that have gotten more rain than this. So it's a, it's a localized thing. But uh, there's, ju there's just not a whole lot of rain in the forecast, at least not until we get into next week. Outside right now, we've got mostly clear skies, 77 degrees. North northeasterly winds at about 3. Dew point is at 66. That number should come down some as we get into the afternoon. Outside, uh, 81 Castroville, 73 Bernie State, 75 in Hondo, 80 in Castroville. A lot of places starting to get close to that 80 degree mark. Very little cloud cover. This uh, is very different from yesterday where we had the morning clouds. Now we're going to see full sun and that really helps to boost the temperatures. I mentioned the dew points. They'll be in the 60s most of today, maybe dropping off a little bit this afternoon into the low 60s. So that almost puts us in the pleasant category. I don't think you'll notice the humidity all that much. You will notice the heat though. Up around 94 for a high, some places in the upper 90s, maybe even 100 out in Del Rio. And then by tomorrow, we go even hotter, 96 here in town. The record tomorrow is 97. We're going to be right on the verge of setting a record. 101 in Catula tomorrow, 101 in Del Rio. So still some summer heat lingering around here. Nicholas is still producing some rain, what's left of Nicholas anyway. Showers and heavy rain stretching from Georgia up to the Carolinas, but that is moving east away from us and taking all the energy with it. Very quickly, let's check in on the tropics. Just two areas here that we're really watching. And there is a good chance that these will develop into something. But at this point, they may miss land altogether, and that would be a good thing. It looks like this, this system is going to curl back off to the north, and uh, this system may stay just off the coast. We'll let you know if they develop, but nothing that is headed towards Texas. Meantime, our forecast shows a little area of low pressure that moves in. That may kick off a shower tomorrow afternoon. I think maybe a little better chance as we get into Saturday, closer to the coast. Rain chances, though, at 20%. Your weekend still looks fine. 10% chance tomorrow, 20% chance Saturday, Sunday. Better chance of rain next week as a weak frontal battery gets closer to the area and fall officially begins on Wednesday. We'll be right back. I've got another incident popping up right now. We had that problem or have had that problem all morning long at 35 in Ben Zingleman. And then you go a little further north. We've got this giant mess, 35 at Topper Wine, major accident. Look at all that traffic stuck in those southbound lanes. Northbound, no problem. But again, 35 southbound at Topper Wine. And this is kind of cool. <laughs> Color me confused. I saw yeah. this picture and I wonder what the heck it was. Did you see this online, KSAT.com? It looks scary. Yeah, so this is on our website. Like, it looks like Michael Myers was spotted on the beach, but it, of course, is not Michael Myers. And this is during Tropical Storm Nicholas. It turns out this was a Galveston attorney. Yeah, Mark Metzger was taking a stroll Monday as the rain and high winds hit. Uh, police respond after receiving calls. He said... He was doing it for a joke, like a prank. Yeah, but he was cited just to know, and he says he's going to continue to pull these pranks as long as it makes people smile. Hmm. Makes, that makes no sense. Like, <laughs> Pee Wee Sherman showing up at Fiesta.